We're here today at the Veterans uh, Culver City Park to celebrate uh, a second chance at life. This is our heart transplant picnic. We've been having this picnic for the last 20 years. We're family and support uh, people from their transplant come together and celebrate their second chance at life. When I was um, 24, I was in law school and um, got very sick very suddenly. A virus attacked my heart and I needed a transplant and I was transplanted. And that lasted about 26 years until the end when vasculopathy, which is a transplant disease, attacked my heart and, and pretty much decimated it in a number of months and I needed another transplant. The large number of our patients who end up being transplanted come to us from outlying hospitals in a very critical, severe state of illness. Those patients need urgent evaluation and listing for heart transplantation and in many cases mechanical circulatory support. So these patients get referred to us, they are usually sometimes referred to me directly or sometimes to our cardiomyopathy uh, doctors and they get evaluated and, and then they go through a whole process uh, of evaluation which means they get seen by the surgeon, by the cardiologist, by the psychiatrist, um, psychologist and um, so on and so forth and then get presented to our weekly conference and then make a recommendation in terms of whether they should proceed with transplantation or if they are a candidate for transplantation or not. My doctor in New York told me that Cedars was the place to go for patients like me who are highly sensitized and have a lot of antibodies. So I flew out to Cedars and was seen immediately and listed immediately. And they started then and there with treating me with antibody treatments to try and help me both before the transplant and after. In the field of transplant, we're able to offer transplant to patients that we otherwise couldn't. For example, those who've developed high level of antibodies in their blood because they've had surgeries or because they've had children, um, we can now do special types of plasmapheresis and other treatments to remove those antibodies, allowing them to be able to tolerate an actual, a donor and get a new heart. What I believe is very important in our case in, at Cedar sinai is the fact that we use a simple blood test to detect rejection. We have actually pioneered one of the major studies demonstrating that the use of the Alamat blood test in the first six months after heart transplantation is as good as a heart biopsy to detect rejection. We are in the midst of publishing our uh, data in one of the major journals at this point in time. I believe after our study is published that many other centers will take on this new blood test. At Cedar sinai there is a patient-centered approach. They look at patients as individuals and they are able to tackle the specific problems and they were able to really hone in on what to do to keep me alive until the transplant, which was no small task, and then to help me afterwards. It's seven, seven weeks out and I'm jogging now. I've, I really feel well. So we customize the treatment plan for each patient and we do this as a team and uh, each patient undergoes a full evaluation for again making sure they're on optimal medical therapies, evaluating for potential traditional surgeries, transplant or devices. The syncardiator artificial heart is one of the many devices available that is used at the present time as bridge to transplant. There are ventricular assist devices, LVATs, and total artificial heart. The difference is that the total artificial heart provides full support for the failing heart. And the way this is done is that we actually go in, remove the failing heart, and place uh, the total artificial heart. It uh, provides support for both the left and the right ventricle, actually replaces both ventricles, and provides total circulatory support for the patient. I have been at some of the best hospitals in the country and Cedars is really, I have to tell you, it's like nothing I've seen. Well, I've been in heart transplantation for the past 30 years and certainly I've seen tremendous advances in the field. When I first began, everyone had rejection and in fact today at our program only about 5% of patients have rejection. So we certainly have had a tremendous advantage not only in anti-rejection medications but also in techniques and the way we put in the heart and preservation as well. I feel so fortunate to be at Cedars. They saved my life. <laughs>